The Callisto Protocol is one of the most visually advanced games out there. With extremely high quality assets paired with multiple ray tracing effects, it packs some truly superb visuals, at least if you're playing it on a high-end console or PC. But despite its remarkable graphics, the Callisto Protocol is a cross-gen title, which means it also ships on last-gen consoles, including the nine-year-old base machines. So how did Striking Distance Studios manage to cram this game onto the PS4 and Xbox One? Is last-gen Callisto serviceable, or do the cuts simply run too deep? The Callisto Protocol is seriously downgraded on last-gen consoles in a way that we rarely see in cross-gen games. Flipping between the Xbox One and PS5 versions here, there's a big difference between the final images on the two machines. So how do they actually break down? I'll be using the last-gen consoles interchangeably here, as they have very few visual differences to separate them from each other. The first and most obvious difference lies in texture quality. Across the board, the 2D artwork has been hugely simplified. With the 1S and PS5 in performance mode side by side, texture resolution is much lower on just about every surface in the game. From the main character's jacket to metalwork on the ship interior, texture assets are much blurrier. And it's not just resolution that's been cut back. A lot of the overlaid textures are simply missing, like the security label on this robot or the warning sign on this beam. Even the Series S, which does have moderate texture quality reductions compared to PS5 and Series X, looks much better than last-gen console. After loading a saved game, textures can take a while to load in fully as well, sometimes taking upwards of 10 seconds before the full-res assets appear. In certain cutscenes, textures would fail to load entirely for a few seconds as well. The last-gen machines are simply way behind current-gen here, with smeared and low-detail 2D artwork. Model geometry is similarly simplified. Environments look significantly chunkier and often have a bit of a low poly look. Broadly speaking, most aspects of the game environment have less geometric complexity on the last gen console platforms. Most of the coarser details on the walls and ground are still represented to some degree, but they usually have been decimated somewhat relative to current gen machines. In a couple of instances, I was able to spot larger cutbacks as well, like the pillars in the security room, which are completely absent on last gen machines. In a few areas, there are also some missing bits of ground clutter on last-gen consoles. This shot, for instance, lacks the fabric, cables, and body that are all present on current gen. These items don't seem to affect collision, but do add some ambience that is missing on the weaker hardware. The next major difference is a big reduction in shadow quality. We see a mix of cutbacks here. The resolution of shadow maps has been decreased in general, which is most visible on character self-shadows which have a pared back look relative to current gen consoles. Certain bits of level geometry no longer appear to be shadow casting, and self shadows are missing for a lot of the environment. Last gen consoles have passable shadow coverage, but relative to the PS5 or series consoles, they are missing out. Hair quality is reduced as well. Larger volumes of hair look similar across current and last gen, but sparse hair has a very different appearance. The main character's beard looks much fuller on current gen consoles, for example, and this character's closely shorn hair seems to be represented with 2D texture detail on last-gen consoles, while on PS5 and Xbox Series consoles, it has visible strands. Those are the obvious visual differences between last-gen consoles and the current-gen versions without ray tracing. But what if we bring in the PS5 version in its higher quality mode, with all of its RT effects enabled? The RT shadows make for a very obvious visual upgrade in my opinion. Self-shadowing looks much more detailed relative to either last-gen consoles or the PS5 in performance mode. Fine geometric details now cast accurate shadows, even at extreme angles, shadows that would be prohibitively expensive to resolve using shadow maps. Larger shadows showcase realistic shadow penumbra, like on this character shadow, which looks synthetic and overly sharp in shadow map form. RT reflections also have a pretty major impact on the visuals. The clearest improvements come when looking at glossy surfaces that are parallel to the camera, where appropriate screen space information is lacking for reasonable SSR coverage. More subtle improvements are visible in rougher, metallic materials, where the RT reflections provide more accurate color on the PS5 version here. 
Taken as a whole, the last-gen versions of the Callisto protocol are comprehensively downgraded relative to current-gen machines, though the cutbacks don't really come as much of a surprise. With older GPUs and slow mechanical storage, the full-fat Callisto protocol experience was out of the question on 8th-gen hardware. But the final result ultimately looks pretty decent on the last-gen consoles, at least taken on its own terms. There are a myriad of cutbacks, most notably a big reduction in asset quality, but the fundamentals are still here, with strong lighting and impressive character modeling. This is still the same game, but a lot of the intricate detailing that impresses on current-gen consoles is absent, and the advanced ray tracing effects are gone as well. So we've talked about the differences between last gen and current gen consoles, but what about the differences between the individual last gen machines? As I said at the outset, there's very little to distinguish them really. They generally do look very similar. Even the additional RAM on the One X hasn't led to an improvement in asset quality, suggesting that storage bandwidth may be the primary bottleneck or that the last gen versions were homogenized for production reasons. There is slightly greater shadow coverage on PS4 Pro and One X, though this only appeared on a handful of objects in my testing. This doorway, for instance, lacks any sort of representation of self-shadowing on the base consoles, but does have shadowing on PS4 Pro and One X. Post-processing effects also improve on the enhanced last-gen consoles. The per-pixel motion blur has a banded, artifact-ridden appearance on PS4 and Xbox One, but resolves more cleanly on the enhanced machines. Depth of field appears stronger and with clearer bokeh on the higher end consoles, which is more similar to the way depth of field resolves on PS5. The higher rendering resolution on PS4 Pro and One X may be the culprit here, producing more refined post-processing in line with the increase in pixel count. Ultimately, and perhaps unsurprisingly, the biggest difference between the last gen machines lies in rendering resolution. Unfortunately, Callisto is a tough game to pixel count for a variety of reasons, most notably because the motion blur setting seems to be bugged on last gen consoles and can't be turned off at the moment, and we do have a lot of platforms to cover. So these pixel counts aren't exhaustive, but should be indicative of the resolutions you can expect in general play. 1S is the console that exhibits the most variability. I counted results as low as 720p and as high as 900p. Though again, it's possible it could vary further, and it seems to spend a lot of time between 800p and 900p or so. PS4 counts in at 1080p at highest, and seems to operate at 1080p most of the time as well, though it can dip a little bit lower than that under load. Xbox One X and PS4 Pro are a bit more curious. Both consoles essentially deliver a stable 1440p resolution. I noticed a tiny bit of deviation on PS4 Pro, but the One X seemed totally locked. Typically, we would expect a substantial resolution advantage for the One X, but all indications are that both consoles deliver the same pixel count here. In still shots, PS4 and One S are surprisingly comparable. PS4 typically enjoys a small clarity advantage, but it's not especially significant. The One S looks pretty solid here, and I suspect we're seeing some upsampling to clean up the image, though in motion you do see substantially more image breakup than on PS4. PS4 Pro and One X are totally neck and neck, with no readily apparent difference in image quality to separate them. Both deliver a good looking final image that holds up well on a 4K set, with just a little bit of softness. So visual settings are reasonable, though comprehensively downgraded compared to current gen, and image quality is pretty good for the most part. But how does performance fare? This is where the last gen systems are truly taxed, unfortunately. First though, we should get something out of the way, the cutscenes. Unsurprisingly, the Callisto protocol targets 30 FPS on last gen consoles, but that isn't the initial impression you get from starting the game. After the opening pre-encoded cutscene, the real-time sequence that follows runs at roughly 24 FPS across all last-gen consoles. It looks jittery and has an odd frame cadence of alternating 33 millisecond and 50 millisecond frames. This holds true for all the real-time cutscenes in the game that I encountered. All of them run at about 24 FPS, with occasional frame time spikes and stutters, but never really getting anywhere near 30. 
This applies to shorter cutscene sequences as well, like checking this container or when opening certain doors. Initially, I thought this might be a CPU related issue, but I loaded up the PS4 version on PS5 to double check and the 24 FPS frame rate returned, albeit without any of the drops we see on last gen consoles. The native PS5 version runs these sequences in line with the gameplay frame rate, in contrast, at either 30 FPS or 60 FPS, depending on the mode. So the 24 FPS cap does seem intentional, but it seems likely that there's a performance related rationale for it that specifically applies to the last gen machines. And while 24 FPS may be cinematic, it really looks quite off-putting, juxtaposed against the 30 FPS gameplay. Putting cinematics aside, let's move on to frame rates during gameplay. The One S, the weakest of the consoles that we're testing, does a pretty poor job of hitting its 30 FPS target in typical play. Many of the game's environments cause sustained frame rate drops, and results in the mid-20s are common. Very cinematic, perhaps, but not especially good for input response or animation. Combat can cause further frame rate issues, with results in the low to mid 20s proving quite typical for encounters with multiple foes. To be fair, the 1S can hit 30 FPS in more sedate areas when out of combat, but it's usually below 30 FPS and often well below. The PS4, in contrast, is a much stronger performer. It can still drop hard if pushed during select sequences, but it manages to hold 30 FPS much more often. When the 1S is buckling in the 20 to 25 FPS region, the PS4 often manages to stick to 30 FPS with the occasional dropped frame. The overall frame rate level isn't particularly strong, and the game does deliver 50 millisecond frames on a pretty frequent basis and does have larger stutters occasionally, but performance is generally serviceable and sustained frame rate drops aren't especially common. For a game that pushes even current gen consoles quite hard, this is a pretty decent showing, I would say. The PS4 Pro is a slightly stronger performer than the PS4. Again, we do see dropped frames somewhat frequently, though it's hard to get the game to drop below the high 20s. Generally, it's a 30 FPS experience with small dips and of course those 24 FPS cutscenes as well. The Xbox One X actually does manage to hit and hold 30 FPS in gameplay pretty consistently. The one-off frame drops still occur, though only occasionally and sometimes there are some larger stutters during traversal but outside of cutscenes, the frame rate is reasonably stable. Perhaps the relatively conservative resolution target is helping here. So I wouldn't say that the Callisto Protocol performs especially well on last gen consoles. The PS4 and Pro versions are serviceable enough with significant but not game breaking drops, and the One X does manage a pretty stable 30 FPS during gameplay. But the cutscenes are jittery and off-putting, and substantial performance issues pop up with enough frequency to make the game feel somewhat inconsistent. Considering the frame rate issues that crop up even on current gen consoles though, this is a decent showing for the weaker last gen console hardware. The performance woes on Xbox One S are a little bit harder to excuse, with severe and frequent frame rate drops. Perhaps the resolution figures need to be cut back further or maybe visual features need to be pared back, but in any case, performance needs to be improved. The Callisto Protocol was never going to be a typical modern cross-gen game. In other words, a title that features similar visuals across all platforms with reasonable performance metrics across a broad range of console hardware. Instead, the visuals are comprehensively paired back on last-gen consoles, and performance runs the gamut from decent to poor, with the Xbox One in particularly questionable form. Despite its cross-gen heritage, the Callisto Protocol is a game that seems squarely targeted at current-gen hardware, and is definitely best enjoyed on newer consoles. Even the Series S version looks and performs much better than the One X release, which is the strongest of the last gen versions. This game is a stark reminder of the hardware advantages inherent to current gen tech. With that said, the PS4, PS4 Pro, and One X do offer a decent enough experience, at least judged in isolation. The unfortunate exception is the Xbox One release, which is best avoided for now. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and press the bell for YouTube notifications. Check out the Patreon, 
at digitalfoundry.net for exclusive and early access content. And to get in touch, just use Twitter. Thanks for watching.